Hey guys, Chris from the Ultimate Recycler. This is going to be part four of our uh, radio shared house lot cleanup. Uh, we didn't get back last week because Victoria went back into COVID lockdown, so that was a bit of a bugger. And we were planning to go tomorrow, being Tuesday, but uh, it's forecast to be 12 degrees, windy and very wet. And as you saw in part three, we got very wet. It took us a while to dry out. We got quite cold on the way home because the heater in the van doesn't work. Um, so we haven't done much. We haven't done anything back at the house since then. I thought I'd show you a few things now. I've been packing some in my storeroom out the back of the shop. I used to have a nice big cabinet there and I did a video recently on moving that cabinet. I was planning to set up some shelving for my e-waste here, but the van has to be unloaded. I have to put it somewhere. So I'm starting to stack some here. Let's go and have a look in the van. And I also have stacked some in a little storage room next door in Christine's shop. And here's a store in behind Christine's shop where she does keep a lot of fabric and, and things like that. But uh, I managed to speak nice enough to her that I could store some of my things out here. Uh, my things being the stuff we're getting from the shed in this deal. Uh, Christine's handling the stuff we get from the house. And many of you probably don't know that Christine has a shop right next door to mine. Now, even though we are a couple and we do a lot of business together, we do run two separate businesses. So uh, a lot of our deals are joint deals and we basically just split the income because we both put in a lot of work. Oh, there's some speakers in there. Um, but some deals we do on our own because we do run separate businesses. So this is where we've put a lot of the stuff out of the van um, in here, but also I've got to unload now because most of this was from the first load. And we'll go and have a look in the van now and see what I have to move now. Because if we're doing, going to do another load this week, the van will need to be emptied. So here's a peek in the van. I have to get all of this out. Um, we packed some of these boxes, but a lot of the boxes were already packed up there. And we just had a quick peek to make sure it wasn't rubbish we are bringing home. So a lot of these are truly lucky dip boxes, which is enormous fun. Um, we're pretty good at Tetris, but I am rather annoyed that there's a little gap in the middle there that I couldn't find a box to fit in. So there you go, an inside into my quirky personality. But uh, anyway, we do like packing stuff. We find we can get a lot in, and a lot of times we go to people's places and they say, oh, you'll need a couple of trips, and we say, oh, we reckon we'll fit it in. And we invariably surprise people. So I guess you get good at something if you do it long enough. All right, so I'm going to move these boxes out. I've already taken one row out, and there's probably three or four essentially walls of boxes there before it gets to the the front part of the van. Kristen has emptied the other part so I'll get to it and move this in and this part was really just a bit of an update as I said we will be going back later this week and I'll film that as as part what will we be up to part five then but before we finish this part I might just go through a couple of the lucky dip boxes with you and we'll see what we find. Before we get to the boxes, there's a couple of things here came out of the front shed. That gas trolley is a nice vintage one with good cast wheels, solid tyres, and I put $50 on that one. These two ladders are actually locally made, they were made in a nearby town. Good solid steel ones, quite high, excellent condition. They were very dusty when I dragged them out of the shed. I've got $80 each on those, but I would probably take $150 the pair. And the little wheelbarrow here, the tire is flat and probably no good, but I'll still get 25 for that. People like to grow flowers in wheelbarrows and it's still actually usable, you could put another wheel on it. So that adds up to a bit over $200 here. It's amazing how these little sundries add up when we do a house lot. I've just about got the van emptied. We'll leave those few boxes for tomorrow. Let's have a look at the big pile I've got inside. Well, that's filled a vacant spot. Things don't stay empty here for long. And I'll tell you, if Australia ever enters a team in the Olympics for random cardboard box stacking in inappropriate places, I reckon I'm a shoe in for the team. Uh, there's a lot of heavy boxes here, and I forgot that there are a lot with books in, and we haven't sorted the books. Uh, there's some large coffee table books. There's a lot of vintage stuff. There's, uh, of course, there's um, electronics-related uh, manuals and things. So I'm keen to go through those. This box here, though, I'm, we're going to have a look at next. It's, um, we'll just have a fossic through. It's a Swallows Biscuit box, which is quite vintage in its own right. It's in pounds. If we look there upside down. So it would date to the 60s, this cardboard box. 
and it's rather intriguing. It has sundries, which is the abbreviated name for my shop, um, but it would be just referring to random bits of crockery, fragile tea set, uh, crockery care. So I think we'll have a look in this one. Given that most of you have seen the radio gear and a lot of boxes have radio parts in them and a lot of the other boxes have books, let's open something a bit different and see what crockery we have in this vintage 60s cardboard box. Okay, let's play a little game. How much value do you reckon we've got in this box? Now, it's crockery. It's marked fragile, so I would assume that it's going to be okay. Some older crockery, of course, can be chipped and damaged. Of course, there's no telling whether it was their grandma's best china or whether it was a, a birthday gift and they really felt like they couldn't throw it out. But let's have a look. What do you reckon? I don't know. Let's say about $50 total. I'm assuming there's nothing good in there, of course. What's your guess? Go on, be honest. And we'll see how it pans out. Now, oh, what are these? Baby bonnets or something. Certainly vintage. So that's not China. I'll check with Christine on that. They might be saleable. We'll put them aside. We won't count them because they're not China. Righto, let's get into this. It'll be interesting to see when it was wrapped up. The newspaper has yellowed a bit. There's a date on this piece. And it was wrapped up in 1985. So that's going back a bit. And it looks to be English. An English teacup. Not an overly valuable pattern. So maybe it's just all that one tea set. That would be a little bit boring if it was, but... Oh no, what's this? This is a glass. So we have random bits in here. There we go, that looks like a 1960s nice fine etched glass. So if there's a set of six of those, they will bring 20 to $25 on their own. So I might be way off with me 50. Who said 100? You might be closer. So we've got two of those. But of course you have to remember that glassware um, quite often full sets, well most of the time full sets don't survive. There's usually, a, you know, four or five or sometimes even three. And oh, well, we've got three now and they're in good condition. And it feels like another teacup there, a teacup. So this is the fourth one of these glasses. Nice, because we can sell a set of four quite well. Um, they always sell better in sets, in even sets. Like a set of five is always awkward. I often say it's a set of four with a spare. Oh, okay, this is cool. This is pink glass. Probably Depression era. Um, nice pattern. That's a nice little jug. So I wonder if there's a sugar bowl for it, but even as a nice little pink glass jug, I think that would easily get $10, maybe even $15. So I'll keep unpacking this box, and then I'll spread them all out. And I'm pleased to see that it isn't just all one tea set. We have random stuff in here. So I'll unpack it off camera. I'll spread it all out, and we'll go along and value it and see how we go. But I'm thinking that my $50 was a little stingy. Now this doesn't look to be anything special. Possibly Japanese. Oh, it's actually got a nice pattern in the middle. Oh, okay, that's nice. Um, I'd say it is Japanese. It's not marked. But that's a very typical Noritake pattern, or at least the colours. So it may not be, but it does look... It's certainly vintage Japanese. And... That's a really nice little pattern. I think that bowl would get, again, $15, maybe $20. $20 might be a little ambitious. So I like to keep my shop fairly cheaply priced, but all right. All right, with, without any more ado, I will unpack it all and spread it all out. So who said a lot more than 100? Because I think you're going to be in front. We have a complete tea set. This is the tea set that the the uh, lid referred to. It's early English. It's possibly 1930s, maybe, maybe 20s. The cup style looks a bit later, but the pattern looks early, so I'm not totally sure on the date of that. Yeah, it, WS, it may be very early 1900s, actually, because it looks an Edwardian style pattern. Uh, we have six saucers, six side plates. 
six teacups, none of them are damaged. We have the cake plate and we have the sugar bowl and creamer jug. So a complete set. So that blows my estimate right out of the water. Now to sell this, what's it worth? Well, what I like to do with these sets is make up trios. And sometimes I will actually sell the set per piece. So a really nice English trio like that one, I think would get $30. So we've got six of them. So there's $180. Plus we have, oh, let's say 10 for the plate. I mean, that's cheap, but that's 190 The jugs, people often collect jugs and that's a really nice one. I think we'd get 20 for that. But let's put the jug and sugar bowl together as a $30 set. So that's $220 for that set. So that's by selling it separately. I could probably put it in the shop and price it per item, but then maybe offer a discount if someone wanted the complete set. But it is hard to sell sets these days because people collect jugs and people collect trios. They don't want to get six of the same one. But anyway, let's just say, all right, let's say $200 for that set. What else have we got? We've got a nice little um, crinoline and Lady trio here, English again, James Kent. Perfect condition. Probably a 1940 shape there. That's a $20 one. People collect the crinoline lady. So $20 there makes $220. This another English trio is uh, Salisbury, I think. Probably $15 on that. I like to keep my trios fairly cheap. Otherwise, they sit around the shop too long. So I'll try and keep up with this in my mind. Maths on the fly. I think we're at $235. We have an orphan cup here. We won't worry about that one. This is Royal Dalton. In good condition again. Uh, it's a very popular roses pattern. I think I forget the actual name of it. But um, it's a common pattern and that will sell for 10 uh, in good nick. That's 245. This trio is complete and undamaged and it has a nice floral effect on it. It's uh, not a particularly good brand trio, just Vale English. Uh, 235. We'll make that 10. It's 245. We said, say, 15 for this one. It's 250, 260. Um, we'll go 10 on the pink glass jugs, 270. This is an English trio here. Uh, I think this is Johnson and Son. Uh, we'll just put 10 on that. It's a bit more modern, that one, maybe 50s. Um, what were we, 270, 280? My math, I could be losing my figures here, so 280. We're going to be roughly around a bit, right? And we said about 20 for that set. It's 300. Uh, that's just a bit of EPNS, nothing special. So... Who said $300 out of that box? It's just amazing how things can add up. Mind you, I've got to say, this was a quality box in that nothing's damaged. Quite often you unpack boxes like this and there's a bit of modern stuff and there's things with chips and cracks. But this clearly was uh, Granny's Good China, perhaps. Um, some good age to some of it. Well, good age to most of it. $300 from a box. And the box itself, I reckon that's a $20 box. I haven't actually Googled when Swallow's Biscuits finished. But that's certainly, I would say, a 60s box. It may even be 1950s. And look, we'll put, I don't know, put 20 bucks in that. Nice colour. Maybe 10's more realistic. But hey, $300 from a box of China. Woohoo! It makes our $1,000 purchase for the lot look pretty good, doesn't it? So, all right, this is all clean enough to put in the shop as well. I'll price this out next chance I get so I don't have to box it up again. I've got a bit of space in my cabinets in the shop. So there we go, we've unpacked a little box of something a bit different for you. We'll get back to the books and the radio gear when we get a chance. I have to start attacking this before it grows like a cancer and takes over my entire building. Um, I'm sure I get here each morning and, and boxes have multiplied. But anyway, it's all part of the fun. It's all part of that big game of Tetris where we've got to move shapes before they fill up the whole screen. So... We'll finish this video now. I plan to get back out. I'll finish emptying the van um, tomorrow, tomorrow morning. And, oh, we've got records in here. And I shall take you along on Thursday. Christine will be with me. We'll take Coco along and we'll get back into the other part of the shed. And that will be part five. So I'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Bye.